Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the sailing village of West Itchener in West Sussex. It sits on the shores of Chichester Harbour and it's about four and a half miles southwest of Chichester. And we're going to be walking a roughly seven mile route today from West Itchener down to West Wittering along the beach around East Head and back up along the shore to our starting point. And the whole area around here is designated an area of wetland of international importance as well as being an area of outstanding natural beauty. Now I'm filming at the beginning of October it is a glorious sunny day there are a few clouds about there's a lot of blue sky should be perfect conditions for walking do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at the pay and display car park in the village. Uh, West Itchener has been home to the Chichester Harbour Conservancy since the 1970s. And it primarily oversees the harbour as a nature reserve where sailors and wildlife coexist peacefully. Although it's uh, called West Itchener, it tends to be known locally as Itchener. There was an East Itchener that was really just a manor house rather than a village to the east of here, but that settlement became deserted in the 15th century and the mansion there demolished in the mid-19th century. The name derives from the Saxon chief name Icker, although the settlement was probably started by the Romans. Some historians have suggested that they first landed somewhere along the Chichester Channel, although others suggest it was somewhere in Kent. Certainly you've got the Roman palace at Fishbourne, which is just to the northeast of here, and that was a, initially a grain store in 43 AD at the time of the invasion. Uh, and of course uh, there was the building of the Roman fort at Chichester. But it really started to become established when the West Saxons uh, settled here after the Romans left. Anyway, before we start our walk properly as it were, let's have a, a little wander through the village. And this building here is the harbour office. It used to be the custom house and from 1852 it was the only custom house on the entire Chichester Harbour area. It's uh, now the harbour office and also home to the Chichester Harbour Conservancy. And this is the Ship Inn. There's been a pub in the village since at least 1708 and uh, the Ship Inn shows on a 1898 map, but the present pub here was built in 1933. Well, just on the eastern side of the village is the Itchener Sailing Club. Originally it was two 17th century fishermen's cottages and the club was established in 1927. The area here has access to water at all states of tide and there are races every weekend between April and November as well as midweek racing for keel boats and there are special weeks for class regattas. I think it's got moorings for something like 600 boats. And I was reading that actress Kate Winslet is a member here and eight members in the past have won Olympic medals in sailing over the years from between 1936 to 2000, including of course the great Rodney Patterson, who I think won two gold and one silver. Now from about 1700, shipbuilding became the main employment in the village and a number of warships were launched here during the Napoleonic Wars. The shipbuilding uh, industry declined in the 1800s, but boat building was re-established around 1912. And during the Second World War, one of the shipyards served as a base for the Admiralty manufacturing Fairmile Type B motor launches. And uh, the sailing club was requisitioned by the British Army. I think there was even an anti-aircraft gun based here. Well, we're now going to head south away from the shoreline. Still making our way through the village, heading towards the church. Some beautiful houses here. I read that uh, back in 2012, something like 40% of the houses here were second homes.
And this rather sweet little church is the Church of St Nicholas, of course the patron saint of sailors, founded in 1175 as a chapel and then between 1180 and 1197 it became the parish church. And there's a chancel and nave with no division with a, a shingled bell turret with a spire at the western end. I think it's got three bells. There was an extensive restoration in 1869 and it, it stands on a mound. The lich gate was added in 1950 and the north vestry added, I think, in 1959. Well, we'll have a very, very quick look inside. Uh, looks like there's the font there, which I believe is 13th century on the left hand side. Beautiful stained glass window straight ahead. I think actually, yes, there are some lights, although it might flicker a bit on the, the GoPro. And then just looking down to the chancel, the altar at the end. Again, some beautiful stained glass windows looking quite stunning in the morning sunshine at the far end. And then just looking back towards uh, a, a little bell tower. Looks like there's a little fairly modern wooden gallery. And I love that round stained glass window at the top. Oh, look, Logan, there's a poster. They've got a pet service here this coming Sunday. Well, very close to the church is the village hall, which is in front of me here. I think it was built in the 1950s. Right, we need to pick up a footpath that takes us south away from the village. So this path that we're on now is going to take us directly to West Wittering. And it's actually part of the Sultan's Way, which is a, a 12 mile cycle route that goes from Chichester to West Wittering. It was opened in 2005. Well, just as we're making our way along the path, over to the west of us is Itchner Park and uh, Itchner House, which was built by the third Duke of Richmond in 1787. Of course, uh, he um, himself lived up at Goodwood but uh, I don't think we're going to see too much of it. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure if that's it over the top of the hedge there. So I might have to put up an archive picture. certainly a, an autumnal field today. All the fields are, are now bare, harvest over, blackberries have all gone, lots of acorns on the ground and the leaves on the trees just starting to, to turn brown. <laughs> it's beginning to get quite windy so hopefully uh, the audio is going to be okay. I've switched to microphones, I've got the uh, shotgun microphone now operating. Um, now it looks like uh, we leave the Sultan's Way here and continue along a footpath along the side of that hedge. just a little pit stop to check out the view. It's obviously a very flat area around here as we get nearer to West Wittering. Um, a lot of farm fields but from time to time when I look back north I can see the South Downs and over to the west I can just about make out the top of Portsdown Hill uh, near Portsmouth. Well, we're not far from West Wittering now. Looks like our 
um, path has joined up with a sort of unmade track. I think it's called Sheepwash Lane, and I just passed a house called Sheepwash House. Looking at an old map, there was indeed a sheep wash at the end of the lane. Well, another little pit stop. Again, looking back to the north, and uh, yeah, you can just about see the top of the South Downs behind those trees in the far distance there. Well, we're now coming into West Wittering. I've had to join the, the sort of main road from Sheepwash Lane that goes into uh, the village, but it looks like there's a, a footpath and verge all the way, so it's, it's safe. Well, we've now made it to the pretty little village of West Wittering, which is full of quite delightful houses and cottages, a few thatch, really is quite pretty. There are a couple of villages, East and West Wittering, and the, the name Wittering comes from something like Witherer, it's a, a, a Saxon chief name. Let's have a little look at a few things in the village before we head out to the sea. <laughs> now this building here with a, a gate underneath a rather magnificent yew arch is the Dog and Duck, and indeed it shows on us on an 1898 map as in a, a pub but uh, obviously you see now it's uh, purely residential. Well this is the Church of St Peter and St Paul at West Wittering. Now a monasterium, a sort of cell used by a monk was possibly established here in 740 AD but there's been three possibly four churches here in the past one was destroyed between 950 AD and 1010 AD by Viking raiders. It was rebuilt in 1016 and then at some stage the Normans rebuilt it. And it consists of a 12th century nave and a late 12th century south aisle and a slightly later south chapel. The chancel and north tower date from the 13th century. The north porch was added in the 15th century. The chancel was restored in 1845 and the rest of the church restored between 1873 and 1875. I think it's got five bells. Well, it looks like uh, this church has got a pet service this coming Sunday as well. Excellent stuff. Well, we'll have a very, very quick look inside and just through the porch, right hand side, magnificent organ that's kind of split in two with a terrific stained glass window between and then this is the font which I believe dates back to the 11th century splendid and then heading towards the chancel you've got the pulpit here on the left and then there's the altar Again with another quite amazing stained glass window above, quite beautiful. Well the pub over the road there is called The Wittering, although it changed its name from the old house at home in 2022. The building itself was uh, built, well, after 1846 but before 1875. We're just coming out of West Wittering need to look out for this sign, Berry Barn Lane, which we go down towards the sea. Although it says private road, residents and visitors only, it is actually a, a public bridleway. Well folks, we've made it to the beach. <laughs> it's brilliant here. So to my right, I'm looking out to the English Channel. Ahead of me is East Wittering and Bracklesham. And behind me over to the west, which is where we'll be going, is uh, East Head. So we've got a gorgeous beach walk to look forward to. I tell you, it's fantastic along here. Hopefully you can hear me above the wind. It was a very warm day. So as I'm walking uh, westwards, 
There's some lovely houses sat behind some sand dunes. Um, one of them, I believe, belongs to Nicholas Lindhurst, the actor, but I'm not sure which one. Dogs, they are allowed on the beach, but there are restrictions at certain times of the year between May and September. I'll put the details up sort of further along. Well, the sea, the sand, lots of open area. Time for some whip it zoomies. Cue the music. So I'll just show you some of the views from here. It's just starting to cloud over a little bit. There's Portsdown Hill. You see the, there's some chalk cliffs there. And then there's the Spinnaker Tower at um, Portsmouth. Uh, must be Gosport further out. And then just panning around. Of course, this is the Isle of Wight over on the left-hand side. Now this has been quite a useful reconnaissance exercise for me because in about six weeks time I'm coming back here to do a five kilometre canny cross race with Fiverr. <laughs> At least it'll be flat. I just hope the tide's out. We're just behind the, the sand dunes on the land side as it were. There's a huge car park that's owned by West Wittering Estate Limited which was set up in the 1950s by local residents. There's also a cafe here and this flat area in front of me here um, in the Second World War was a dummy airfield, uh, a decoy airfield called Q52A I think and it was designed to deflect bombing away from RAF Thorny Island to the west and there was both uh, a K type and a Q type here. A K type was a replica airfield with dummy aircraft, uh, and a, a Q type was basically a nighttime decoy with lights to simulate an active airfield. But because it was one of the most successful decoy sites in the war, it was one of the last to be shut down. And there's still some areas around here where the gravel had been laid and outlined with sandbags filled with cement as, as evidence of the old site. <laughs> wow, just look at the way the, the sand has been blown against these beach huts here. Love the patterns that the wind can make. We certainly had a lot of fun on the beach there. So we're now at a place called East Head, which is about as far west as we're going on the walk. And there's a handy little map behind me. So as you can see, it's uh, owned by uh, the National Trust. So, <laughs> sorry for the shadow for the uh, uh, camera, but you can see where we went down Berry Barn Lane and we've made our way along West Wittering Beach. We're here, East Head. So we're now going to start heading back along the new Lipchis Way, uh, which is going to take us all the way back to uh, West Ditchener. Well, a little update on the route. We're now on the new Lipchis Way, at least I think we are, <laughs> which is a 39 mile long distance path that goes from Liphook in Hampshire all the way to West Wittering via Chichester. Uh, and then this little area on my left it kind of looks a bit marshy. I think on an old map it's called salting, so maybe there were um, salt works here in the past. And you've got the sand dunes of East Head there and the um, sort of channel or the um, Chichester Harbour channel on the other side, which we'll see again shortly. Oh, I just had to stop and 
admire some of these houses right by the new Lipchis Way footpath. Beautiful, aren't they? Of course, at the end of their garden, they've got the sea. from time to time I just have to keep stopping and taking in some of the views especially along this section because it's slightly elevated and you get some really great uh, views and this is over to the west and that's Thorny Island in on the other side of the channel and then you've got um, Haley Island a little bit further along and of course well Thorny Island a, a fair chunk of that is a, a British military base I think the airfield might still be used occasionally and of course the Sussex border path goes around it. Oh, it looks like a little bird hide with an information board telling you all the different types of birds that you can see um, some all year round some in the summer some in the winter this is the the view that you get from the hide it's quite breathtaking isn't it well this is a lovely little part of the route, shaded and glimpses of the, the channel on the left, very very peaceful and uh, you can probably hear a wind but it's a really warm wind, I mean I'm in shirt sleeves and it's actually perfect temperature for walking. Well, we've made it back to West Itchener, so it's fingers crossed that the ship is open. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We've made it to the Ship Inn, which we're visiting purely for research purposes for the video, of course. We hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like, and do leave a comment, and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching, and cheerio. Right, we're eagerly waiting for your crisps, I can tell. Oh, I'm I've been looking forward to this. Oh, lovely. Now, <laughs> I don't think you'll go that far out today. <laughs> Didn't think you would. <laughs> you prefer rivers, don't you? <laughs> now, this might be dog dip material not so sure <laughs>